Thank you, Jesus. Well, somebody say glory. Praise the Lord. If you can, you can make your way to your seats this evening. What a mighty power of the Holy Ghost is here. Let's put our hands together for the Lord one more time. We have an extra special treat here this evening and in the person of missionary brother John Mark. He's going to come greet you, tell a little bit of his story. He hails out of Pastor Miles Young Church in Elk Grove, California, but is right now helping his father, who has started a church, is building a church and having great success on um, the name of the city again, Sula, Fiji. And what an honor it is for us to have him here. And I'll just be honest with you, he didn't come here for us. Somebody had a birthday and somebody had to drive from the West Coast and but the main thing is he's here and we're proud to have him here why don't you greet him with a hand clap as we welcome brother John Mark to this pulpit praise the Lord church amen I feel the spirit of victory in this house tonight amen I believe that God's going to do great things in this house tonight I believe that it's the will of God for us amen to be filled by his spirit amen we're not here by accident but we're here by a divine appointment Amen. It's good to be in the house of the Lord. Amen. Thank you, Pastor Ryder. Thank you, Brother Williams. Amen. These are great people, and I just I got connected with them, and they love God, and they love people, and it's very evident, and thank you. It's good to be in the house of the Lord here in Louisiana. Yes, sir. But last year, me and my father, we went to Fiji in August, the month of August, and it was just me and him. We're going there praying and fasting and asking God to have his way. People were asking us if we had any musicians or if we had any singers, but to be honest, we didn't because me and my dad don't know how to sing or play the piano. But we walked by faith, not by sight, because to be honest, we didn't know what was going on, but we're just praying and just trusting in God and just leaning on him. And in that time, we were praying and we were fasting. We met a young man by the name of Ben. And this young man was an ex-rugby player, and we met him, and we taught him Bible studies, and received, he received the plan of salvation. He received the revelation of oneness, and we were there speaking to him, and he got filled with the gift of the Holy Ghost, amen, and he got baptized in the only saving name, Jesus, amen, and when we baptized him, he told us that I play the piano and I sing, and God was just putting pieces and pieces together. But amen, I'm here to tell you that we have four musicians and four singers in our church today. Amen, it's God putting the pieces together. Amen, hey, if you walk by faith and not by sight, and just lean on him and trust on him, and let him be a light unto your feet, God will guide you, amen. And there's another story I would like to tell. Amen, there is this pastor, he was a Trinitarian, who was a part of the Assemblies of God Church, and he had... A well-known church. He was a very respected minister in that organization. And he got connected with us somehow. But it was honestly by God's divine appointment. And God was just working through that situation. And he told us, he said, are you guys witness? And we said, yes, sir. And he said, well, I am a Trinitarian. And I said, well, and we began to teach him Bible studies. And we began to break open the word. And we began to tell him who God truly is. Amen. And when we taught him that Bible study, Brother Ryder, he was like, wow, wow, where was this when I was young? Where was this when I was little? Can I tell you, amen, church, that there is only one God and there is only one Lord? Amen. Can I, can I just tell this church one thing? Amen. The way you measure out a price of a value, the way you measure out a value, amen, to an item is by its rarity. It's by the way it's rare. The way you measure out a value is by how rare it is. And can I tell you that there is only one Lord. There is only one faith. There is only one baptism. And he is still working today. And he is still moving today. Amen. I believe that God can touch your situation. Amen. He's the need to your problem. Amen. He is the answer to your situation today. 
Amen. You probably came here, amen, broken, disgusted, and can't be trusted. But can I tell you, God can take your ashes and He can turn it to beauty. And can I tell you, He can take what you have and, amen, He can multiply it because He is the same God that did it for Abraham. Amen. And God is working in Fiji. And God is moving today. Amen. I remember we had a lady walk into, amen, our church service. And she's been blind for half of her life. And she said, I need a need. And we said, what was your need? She said, I've been blind all of my life. And we told her, well, God can heal you. And Jesus is there for you. Amen. If he can do it for blind Bartimaeus, he can do it for you. Amen. And we began to tell her who Jesus is. Amen. And God filled her with the gift of the Holy Ghost. Amen. But not only that, she became healed. Amen. She was made whole. Amen. And she said, hey, I'm healed. I can see again. She started crying, Brother Ryder. Amen. She said, I can see again. I can see again. She started leaping and said, I can see again. Amen. Don't you believe that we serve? Amen. The mighty God, the everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Amen. So if you have a need right here, amen, God can meet your need. Amen. Does anybody have a need in this place? Amen. Just raise your hand if anybody has a need. Amen. God can touch your need. He's not far away. Every person in this house, amen, underneath the sound of my voice, just know that God is far away at the mention of his name. Amen. He is here today, and I feel it so strongly. Oh, I feel it today. And God's going to give you victory over your situation. God's going to victory over your situation. You see the storm outside. Amen. It reminded me that after every storm, there is a rainbow. Amen. After every storm, there is a promise to be fulfilled. Amen. And God is working in your situation. Amen. God is still moving today. Hallelujah. Thank you, Brother Ryder. God bless you. Oh, come on. Let's put an amen in our spirit. Come on. Do you believe what the man of God's saying on a Sunday night? Amen. 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 What an honor it is to have you here. We want you. He's headed back. In fact, why don't you step back out here, brother, just a little bit. Uh, and brother Williams, Brother Allen, Brother Zonder, y'all gentlemen, lay hands on Brother John Mark. He's headed back April. You know what day your flight's for? Well, he's headed back in April to continue in the harvest. I'm sure came back for no limits in a small stint here. We're glad to have him. I want us to stand all over this congregation. Extend your hands to Brother John Mark. Let's pray for him, his family, and the work in Fiji in the name of Jesus. God, would you let the prayers of this church move right now in his place of labor? Would you anoint his mouth, anoint his hands, anoint his Father in the name of Jesus. Anoint every saint, every singer, every musician in the name of Jesus that there be harvest and increase and signs and wonders done. In the name of thy holy child, Jesus, let it be done, O oh God, to your glory and for their platform that your kingdom would grow. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, amen, amen. You can be seated. We probably should have just had him read a text and preach. <laughs> Boy, what kind of off-site was that? But had we done that, we wouldn't have been able to hear from this next young man. And I'm glad he's here. It's not a stranger to Souls Harbor. His sister has been with us for about six or eight months. And um, they are together going to Albania at the beginning of June. Somewhere around the beginning of June. They'll be there for a month or so. I don't know how much he may tell of this. Um, hopefully not a lot. Huh. So they, uh, if you were watching No Limits, Brother Young explained how in an effort to break into the community where their dad, Brother Paul, who's here, God bless you and Sister Marlis for being here, to break into the community where they're from, um, her, their parents or, or her, their dad is from, they're beginning a VBS. And I bet Sister Marlis, you're going with them again. Are you going, Brother Paul? So the whole family's going to be over there, and they're going to be opening their um, schedule so that God can move in Jesus' name. So I asked him to come. We're going to be praying and, and, and of course, as we get closer, um, you'll be hearing from Sister Annika on a lot of that. But I asked him to come and greet this congregation and leave us with whatever's on his heart. Let's welcome Brother Zander Simone. Can we give God praise tonight? Hallelujah. I already feel the spirit of the Holy Ghost right now. 
John Mark did so good tonight. He's my buddy. I'm glad I was able to convince him to come on me with that three-day drive. Amen. Overheated car. Doing a lot of rapping, freestyling. Yes, sir. Brother Ryder, I thank you. You're, you're one of my mentors in my life. Um, out of my uh, home church, Brother Rick Treese, uh, give honor to my pastor as well. Um, uh, tonight, I want to read from Exodus chapter 32 in verse 1. And when the people saw that Moses delayed to come down out of the mount, the people gathered themselves together unto Aaron and said unto him, Make us gods which shall go before us. For as this Moses, the man that brought us up out of the land of Egypt, we wot not what is become of him. So tonight I want to give some context. You may be seated. Uh, to where Moses was at the time. Moses was on Mount Sinai getting texts from God, getting the Ten Commandments, and he was gone for 40 days. Let me give you a little context about the dynamics of Mount Sinai. Mount Sinai, only Moses was allowed at the top of Mount Sinai. Then he was, he was about, I don't know, arm's reach from God. Arm's reach. No doubt it was a miraculous sight. It was a miraculous experience. Um, and then the second layer of Mount Sinai was where the elders were. They were only allowed up about halfway, halfway up the mount, maybe a quarter um, also a great experience, but not as good as the experience that Moses had. And then at the bottom, you had the Israelites. The Israelites were immature in, in their religion because they had been slaves so long, so long. And they thought that they needed a middleman to serve God. So the people of Israel believed they could only communicate with God through this middleman, Moses. So when Moses didn't come down for 40 days, they grew impatient. They were impatient because they had not been in contact with their middleman, Moses. So they were without their God for 40 days. I'm so glad we don't have to be at the top of the Mount Sinai to have that upper room experience. That we can call on God without being at the top of the mountain. I'm glad I can touch the Holy Ghost from my car. I'm glad I can touch the Holy Ghost from my school. I'm glad I can touch the Holy Ghost from Albania. I'm glad I can touch the Holy Ghost from Fiji. Hallelujah. Woo. I'm glad I don't have to wait to go to church on Sunday to listen to Brother Ryder or to Brother Rick. I don't, I'm glad I can do that any time of the week. Oh, Jesus. To have a conversation with God. Why don't we give him praise right now? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. All over this building with me this evening. Thank God for these words. Thank you for the encouragement. Thank you, Jesus. Not just, thank you, Brother Zonder, not just from on top of the mountain, literally, but across this room, how many people have been in the very dregs of life? And you would say, oh, God, I'm at the bottom. And from there, he heard us. From there, he lifted us. From there. Come on, can you give God a little praise on a Sunday night? Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. They're going to sing. Let's worship before we open the Word of God one last time tonight. Don't forget, after church, Everybody say, after altar call. They've prepared a reception in honor of Sister Ryder, so you're going to want to go back there uh, prior to making your exit tonight. It's just a small reception with a few refreshments, but we want to do that in honor of Sister Ryder. What a beautiful job and what such eloquent words, and in my opinion, fitting words from Sister Tara and Sister Sarah. Thank you all for bearing your heart about Sister Ryder. I know that she'll have those words in her heart for many years and it'll give us all a chance to hug her neck and shake her hand and, and be sweet. Amen. Aren't you glad you got a, a good church family? Aren't you glad you got a beautiful, great singing pastor's wife? I, I would choose her as my pastor's wife even if she was a horrible person because she sings so good. Amen. 
So she's sweet and she can sing better than anybody that's ever held a microphone. It's just hard to beat that. Can you say amen? So we're going to celebrate her after church. Let's lift our hands to the Lord this evening in Jesus' name.
the Lord Jesus. Are you ready to preach on a Sunday night? I want to read to you out of Revelation chapter 7. Maybe a slightly lengthy scripture reading. But the word of the Lord says, after this I beheld and lo, a great number. Everybody say a great multitude. Which no man could number. Of all nations, all nations. So this is not, this is not the 144,000 recorded in the first eight verses of this chapter. This is not that. This is after that vision. And this is an uncountable number of all, or literally it means out of all nations, all kindreds all peoples, all tongues. This great multitude 
stood before the throne. And this great multitude cried with a loud voice, Salvation to our God which sitteth upon the throne and to the Lamb. And all the angels round about the throne and the elders and the four beasts fell before the throne on their faces and worshiped God. And here's what they said. Amen. Amen. Blessing and glory, wisdom and thanksgiving, honor and power and might be unto our God forever and ever. Amen. And one of the elders answered, saying unto me, What are these which are arrayed in white robes? And whence came they? And I said unto him, Sir, thou knowest. And he answered, he said, These are they which came out of great pressure and have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. Therefore, they are set before the throne of God, and they serve Him day and night in His temple, and he that sitteth on the throne shall dwell among them. They shall hunger no more, neither thirst any more, neither shall the sun light on them. Sister Ryder is going to get excited about that. Nor any heat, because the Lamb which is in the midst of the throne shall feed them and lead them unto living fountains of waters and God shall wipe away all tears. There ought to be an amen that comes pronouncing itself out of your spirit. If you've got the Holy Ghost, you ought not be able to keep quiet when we read those scriptures. Hey, I don't know about you, but I'm looking forward to a day. I'm looking forward to a day. I'm looking forward to a day. In fact, everything I do in this life is for that moment. I'm singing for that moment, preaching for that moment. I'm running for that moment. I'm praying for that moment. I'm faithful for that moment. One old country boy said, Preacher, I wouldn't live like that for anything in the world. And I agree with him. But I'm not doing this for anything this world has to offer. I'm doing this because this world is not my home. I'm just passing through. My real treasure is laid up somewhere beyond the blue. The angels beckon me from heaven's open door. And now I can't be at home. No, I can't. Can't be at home in this old world. Woo! Boy, reading these old scriptures and pulling his old commentary out. I wish I had Sister Treese here in this building right now. I can remember an old white-haired man with big glasses standing in a pulpit when I was a little boy. It was a little brass and glass pulpit. I'm so glad I don't have one of those. It would be destroyed by now. And every time Bishop Treese would move his coat, his buttons, you remember that? You remember that old pulpit, Sister Martyrs? Ting! You'd hear their buttons hit. But I can, I can close my eyes and block it all out, and I can remember. He, he, he got to an age where with degenerative disease in his back, he'd have to sit for the first 30 minutes of his sermon. And so they'd put a stool, and he'd wedge his way on that stool, and he'd preach. But about halfway through that message, many times, he'd get himself off of that stool, and the usher would go move it back. And, and I can remember him holding on to that, 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 that pulpit, and he'd lean back, and he'd say, the moment that trumpet sounds, 
You can have everything that I've got to my name. This world is not my home. Oh, I wonder if anybody still believes in the rapture. I wonder if anybody's still living for that blessed hope, the glorious appearing of the great God and my Savior. I don't know if this was proper back then. I sure don't know if it's proper now that we're on YouTube. I don't know that Brother M.D. Therese ever knew what YouTube was. I'm kind of lost track of the years. But it say when I start, when I, when I feel myself, now you're talking about a young boy who, at, I believe, 12 years old, was kicked out of his house with a pair of khakis and a white T-shirt on, kicked out of his house because he got the Holy Ghost and his Baptist stepfather didn't like it. Thumbing his way to his first revival. Preached his first message in a pair of khakis and a white shirt. Somebody had painted a fish on the front of in, 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 in the hill country of Texas. And Elder Brother Hush, Elder Brother Hush, went and bought him his first suit of clothes. Actually, Brother Hush went into his son's closet. And he, he said, Marvin, anything in here, you can have it. Just pick it out. And he said, I preached my second message in another man's suit. We're talking about a boy that didn't graduate from high school. Had to get his GED after he had pastored and left Monroe Christian Life Church. And after he had been at Lake Charles for a long time. Got his GED and was so smart and did so good and was so driven that he was the initial long distance learner for Taylor University, which was a huge college up north. They would bring him into school once a month. He would be there for a week. He would come back home. And he would do, he would do his assignments. And they bring. And now we have distance learning all over the place. Amen. So we're talking about quite a man. He killed the oldest bear ever shot and drug out of British Columbia. Wounded it from a canoe and then chased it down in, in the forest and shot and killed it. We're talking about a man's man. Had a beautiful home, had an unbelievable ministry, had books that once they went out of print, you couldn't find them for a long time. I'm going to be in Odessa, Texas in a few weeks. I hear tell that they got the copyrights and that they're reprinting Brother Teresa's books. And if they are, I'm going to come home with a big luggage full of them. Now listen, they were selling his books for over $375 a piece. On Amazon.com, because you can, I'm talking about he knew more about Old Testament Greek or Hebrew and New Testament Greek and more about eschatology, the study of last things. He knew and forgot prior to his death more than you and I will ever learn combined. We're talking about quite a man with quite a ministry. He said, When I feel my feet start to leave the ground, I'm going to lean back. And I'm going to say, devil, you can kiss my foot. I made it. I wonder if anybody's going through a hard time. I wonder if anybody's fought their way through addictions and trials and tribulations and survived moments where you just did not know if you, when my feet leave the ground, devil you can kiss my foot I made it oh somebody shout the victory on a Sunday night hallelujah 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 don't go far brother saying you can be seated in Jesus name there is this dynamic and I find it through all of Pentecost, I find it through all of religious circles. I find it in every little facet of our church, the church, every church, in fact, every social circle. And it's called the vocal minority. And I'm, I, I'm not, I'm not going to say what I want to say, but... The vocal minority tends to be a pretty powerful bunch. And it's my estimation it's because they got nothing else to do but complain. 
The vocal minority doesn't have a job to be at. That's why they can go pick at everything happening. Now that's a gross overstatement. And some would think a wide slap. Think what you want. When you get the microphone, you can say what you want to say. But there's this other group, the vocal minority. And what I'm saying is, when you look at certain sections of, of the populace of, of any state, and especially of our nation as a whole, the crazy stuff going on in life. Like, like, like kids not being able to figure out what gender they are. And like, like places of business not being able to figure out what picture to put on the restroom doors. You, you understand what I'm saying. Like, all that stuff. You're not dealing with an overwhelming majority such that we just didn't have the votes to win. A lot of that number you're looking at in the world is 5%. 5% of people believe that way. 5% of people feel that way. 5% of people are sensitive toward those issues. 5%. And they are called the vocal majority. Uh, minority. They are a minority in their thinking. They are a minority in their approach to gender, relationships, I'm trying to keep us on YouTube. <laughs> they're, they're, a, they're a minority. Amen. If everybody voted, they'd lose every time. If everybody would get vocal, they'd lose every time. If every politician would stand up and vote his conscience... They would lose every time. They are a minority. They are few among many who think very different than them. Then why do we have hate speech? Why do you have to be careful with what you say? Well, because they're, they're a cranky bunch. They're a loud bunch. They're a vocal bunch. That, that I know, I know you're like, how does anybody have time? They don't have a job to wake up to and go to 6 o'clock in the morning. They have time to sleep in and then show up at the courthouse at 10. They're a minority, but they're a vocal minority. And I know I've held my title, and it probably sounds like I'm rambling right now. But I've got a warning that I would like to usher to a vocal minority. The silent majority is sick of staying Silent. I'm sick of not having a vote. I'm sick of not having a voice. I'm sick of not having a say so. Maybe that's why the writer said, my God, if you've been redeemed, let the redeemed of the Lord say so. I've come to wake up a, a silent, lumbering giant of majority. We are still here. We are still awake. I'm going to say a lot of stuff is probably going to make a lot of people mad. I don't care. We have cake afterwards. That makes everybody happy. <laughs> and fat. We're going to be fat and happy. See? Now, it's not every doctor. I'm telling you, it's not every doctor. We get to, if we worry about it, we think about this. If we just let it, it's not every doctor that just wants to medicate you and to manage death. 
It's not, if all you look at is Kevorkian, you think, my God, all of our doctors are going straight down and, and all they're going to do and they're not really going to help me. No, 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 no. No, no, he was just one. And there's probably others, but he was just one. But if you'll go and hunt and go and peck and go and look and go and pull the covers back a little bit, there are professionals in this city who love you, who love the fact that you're alive and they want to keep you alive and they want to keep you healthy. Amen? I'm tired of... And I've said this already once before, so I, yeah, maybe this is like a deal for me. But I've done something I shouldn't have done, Brother Williams. God, I follow, there, there's a bunch of people out there that have a lot of cool stuff to say, whether they believe it just like we do or not. And I'm very careful with who I follow. I'm very careful what comes through these ears. I'm still stuck on that Sunday school song. But he was, there was a guy making a comment online. And, 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 I, and I responded to it, and boy, it started a windfall. <laughs> but here was the deal. I don't mind being argumentative, but I, I, didn't like, I didn't like the attitude. Because when they approached me about it, it was like, you're one of those? <laughs> I was like, oh, boy. And here was the wording. You mean, this is what they said to me. You mean, I said, are you trying to say that you don't believe that God can be defined in three separate personages of the Godhead? Like it was incredulous. Like I was the only one in the room. I'm sorry. It's 2023. It's an odd year. There's going to be 35,000 under the age of 45 at an arena in the summer of this year, every one of which believe that the Godhead can only be expressed in single unity without any personage at all. You know what we have, but here's the problem. The vocal ones are the minority. The vocal ones are without the revelation. The vocal, hey, how do we fix that? Not with a sword and a spear. We fix that by the majority speaking up. You need to get vocal about your faith, vocal about your Jesus, vocal about what it takes to be saved. Oh, but if we do that, they're going to X and Y and Z. Yeah, of course they're going to X and Y and Z. Because they're not used to you speaking out and saying it. When's the last time over a coffee over a coffee room discussion, you didn't shrink into the corner. You stood up and say, hey, it's not that hard. This is really not that complex. You need to repent of your sins and be baptized in water by immersion in the name of Jesus. Well, why do you? Because it's the only name under heaven given among men whereby we must be and we are not the minority I mean, let, me, let me say that I think you already see where I'm going so let's just go together we are not the minority we are not the minority Oh, I know what you, I understand. I, I get the whole process straight and wide and narrow, and I, I understand that, and, and one left and one, uh, that's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about the fact that there is going to be an uncountable number that John saw, and they made their robes white in the blood of the Lamb, and they understand what where their salvation comes from. Salvation is unto our God. You 
it's not, it's not that we're outnumbered. It's that we're scared. You say, ooh, I don't know if I cross swords with some of those people, then I might X, Y, Z. Well, you know the best thing can happen for you is for you to use a, for you to lose a word fight with a Trinitarian. That's the best thing can happen for you. Because you know what will happen? It ought, what ought, it ought to make you so mad. You come into my office and say, okay, what do I say when they say this? And if you know anything about me, am I going to answer you? Janae, am I going to answer you? Am I really going to answer you? Carly, am I just going to give you a straight five-word answer? Alan Michael, Chelsea, am I just going to give you the answer? No, what am I going to give you? I'm going to give you a book. And it's going to be this one, and it's going to be more than that. And by the time you and I are finished, you're going to be able to handle crossing swords with anybody in this community. Why would you do that? Are you trying to raise a vigilante army? No, 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 no. I'm trying to awaken the sleeping giant of the silent majority. Read the back of the book. We win. Read the back of the book. We win. No matter the weapon, you gotta know we win. They're not ashamed to talk about how he's three. My God, I've never heard that. Who said that tonight about, about the oneness? Did you say that? About rare? I've never heard that before. Oh, that was good. If you hear that on HGR, you just don't say nothing. <laughs> they're not ashamed to talk about it. I'll tell you what, they're not, I'll tell you what, the vocal minority is not ashamed. They're not ashamed to say, oh, I can't believe you'd be so judgmental about stuff like that. While I sip my latte. You got to wake up. We gotta stand up. We've got to become vocal. <laughs> We've got to become vocal. We've got to become vocal. We've got to become vocal. Vocal in our high school, vocal on our place of business. Well, they may kick me out, fire me. My God, they threw Paul off the highest pinnacle. But he won. I have ran this course. I have stayed the course. I have kept the faith. <laughs> I saw thousands out of this tribe. And I saw thousands out of this tribe and I saw thousands out of this tribe and I saw thousands out of this tribe okay and then after this look a number Whew. that'll make you square your shoulders young people I know it feels like you're serving God at just this 23 I know it feels like you're serving God with just the 35 that gather on youth nights and try to break eggs off the heads of the people with little pool noodles. <laughs> you need to come to Pika. Yeah, you should have been there, Janae. Thanks for the face. We welcome you back home. You should have been there. If you weren't there, I wasn't there, but I watched it on video. <laughs> Thank God for security cameras. <laughs> come with us to Pika in July. You'll fight 8,000 just like you. They dress like you. Young ladies, they don't cut their hair just like you. Men, they, they lift up holy hands without wrath and doubting just like you. Their pastors preach just like yours. We not alone. We ain't outnumbered. We ain't running scared. We not down. We not depressed. We're not trying to crawl in a hole and pull it in behind. No, 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 no. I'll tell you what we are. If we're anything, we're just a little too quiet. We're just a little too quiet about my Jesus. A little too quiet about the Word of God. A little too quiet about salvation. A little too quiet. 
I'm sorry, I can't be silent anymore. I don't care what YouTube thinks. I don't care what my neighbor thinks. I don't care what the nominal pastor down the road thinks. I don't care what they say about us. I don't care how they talk about us. I don't care what they post on Calhoun rants about us. I don't care what anybody thinks. We will not be silent. A man, a man couldn't number the number. No man could count the number. Listen with me. It came from all nations. Honduras, raise your hand. You're Cammy, you ain't from Honduras, baby. I love you, but you just straight cracker. Honduras, raise your hand. Nobody from Honduras is in here. Nicaragua, raise your hand. Mexico, raise your hand. California, raise your no, hand. I'm just kidding. <laughs> Fiji, raise your hand. We got more than that. Albanian, raise your hand. All nations. All tongues. All kindreds. All kindreds. Oh, I wish I had time for kindreds. There's groups of people that dance like me, shout like me, dress like me, preach like me, give like me, or faithful like me, think like me, talk like me. They're just like you. You just ain't met them yet. You just ain't met them yet. There's a growing group of them in Fiji. They're scattered all throughout the east and west coast. They're coming into this by the hundreds of thousands in in Africa and China and the Spanish-speaking Caribbean. We're talking about kin folks. That's the southern word. Hey, do you know them? No, but I think we're kin somewhere. Yeah, let me tell you where we're kin. We are all washed in the same blood, and we've all been baptized into the same body. Listen with me. They're standing before the throne. For all of you that would like to theologically cross swords with what I'm saying. I have never refused someone to be wrong in their opinion about eschatology. I would hate to do that for somebody. So we just leave you that right. But you ain't got to be a scholar to read the first eight verses. So let me say this the way you think I am by preaching like I am. Them's earth folks. That 144,000 is still on the earth. But whoever John's talking about is standing before the throne. And they've already made their robes white because of the testimony of the Lord and the blood of the Lamb. They've already come through extreme pressure. Now they've got palm branches. You better find something to wave. They've got palm branches in their hand. Samantha, you running media? What you running back here? Screens. Okay, I need you to turn to one more and then you can come down here. John chapter 11. If you want to know what's going on in heaven right there, This is the end of the parade that started when Jesus was still on the back of a donkey. John chapter 11, verse 12. If you got it, put it up quick. But it's, oh, that's not it. I gave you the wrong verse. Dear God in heaven. John chapter 12, verse 12. On the next day, much people that were come to the feast, when they heard that Jesus was coming, when they heard that Jesus, You want to fill this auditorium up? You want to build a building across the street? You know what you need to do? Quit being silent about the coming of the Lord. Because when they hear Jesus is coming. The 
they took branches of palm trees and they went forth to meet him and they cried Hosanna blessed is he the king of Israel that cometh in the somebody what's his name oh we better not have a silent majority in this building somebody what's his name You mean to tell me all these people heard that Jesus was coming? And when they heard that Jesus was coming, they attached it to an Old Testament scripture and began to, uh, parenthetically, but are, are, are paraphrasing, they began to quote uh, worship out of an Old Testament scripture, singing Hosanna, blessed is the king who comes in the name of the Lord. When they heard Jesus was coming, they begin to sing, Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. He said, I have come in my Father's name. I'm sorry, but the only name I'm hearing is Jesus. Somebody tell me what the name of the Father is. Somebody tell me what the name of the Son is. Somebody tell me what the name of the Spirit is. So you fast forward a few thousand years. You fast forward past Calvary. You fast forward past Pentecost. You fast forward a little bit and John sees that group. John sees the 3,000 from the day of Pentecost. John sees this group standing here in this place today in the future and said it was not a silent majority. It was not a silent majority. But with palm branches in their hand, the Bible says they begin to cry with a loud voice. They begin to cry with a loud voice. They begin to cry with a loud voice. voice. I've come to serve notice on the vocal minority. You don't have the microphone anymore. You don't have the, you don't have the megaphone. I'll do it from a street corner. I'll do it in Fiji. I'll do it with a puppet in Albania. I'll do it on a podcast. I'll do it in the halls of my high school. I'll do it from the mountain. We're done. Don't stop. Don't stop. Don't stop. Don't stop. We're done. You have to make a decision on Sunday night. Will I allow some confused, uneducated, unrevelated, new word, somebody put that one in the bank, unsanctified, Can I talk biblically? Uncircumcised Philistine. One man in a valley railing against Israel kept an army shaking in their armor because they were a a vocal minority. I'm here to serve notice on you. There's an army standing with swords in our hands and a cry in our sp- come on what you gonna do come on come on come on to the north we cry out to the south we will shout the enemy and his kingdom must come down come on young people ignite youth what's it gonna be to the east we profess to the west 
Thank you so much for joining us for service today on live stream. If you'd like to see more content from Souls Harbor, you can check our YouTube channel out. And if you'd like to know some details about the various ministries of Souls Harbor, you can see some of that on our website. We're praying for you and believing that God's moving on you and that his hand is going to work a miracle in your life.